this is Miss Moore, and today we're going to talk about Lewis dot for single atoms. Today's essential question, what do Lewis dot structures for single atoms represent? So Lewis electron dot structures, that's the full name. Um, people usually don't use the full name, but some sort of variation. So um, Lewis dot structures, electron dot structures, Lewis dot, electron dot, electron dot structures, pretty much any mix and match of there. But anyway, Lewis dot structures for single atoms represent the outermost or valence electrons. Okay? Um, and why valence electrons? Why do we want to draw something that only represents the valence electrons? Well, for chemistry, valence electrons is really, really important because it's the valence electrons that are involved in bonding, um, which is joining two or more atoms together um, to make molecules or compounds. So um, the first step of being able to understand bonding is to understand and identify the valence electrons and how they're arranged around the atom. And the Lewis dot structure is sort of a, a rough draft picture of that to kind of make it more clear. Onward. Drawing Lewis dot structures, Lewis electron dot structures for a single atom. So the first step is to write the atom symbol. Okay, um, and that hopefully is fairly second nature by now, but just in case, if I were talking about carbon, the atom symbol would be C. If I was talking about chlorine, the atom symbol would be Cl. Okay, so that's what I mean by draw the atom symbol. Step two is to determine the valence electrons. And again, the valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level. So um, let's just practice that. We'll start with just, I'll, I'll just draw out um, an, an electron figuration for, well, carbon's up there. So how about 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Uh, so um, valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy energy level, and remember the energy level is represented by numbers, the big coefficients. So the outermost energy level is the 2. So um, the valence electrons are 2s2, 2p2. With the number of valence electrons, there are a total of four valence electrons. Um, yeah, I guess maybe we can try one more. So how about, oh, this by the way was carbon. Um, how about another one? If we try 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Now, the outermost electrons, the valence electrons, the highest energy level is 3, right? So this particular atom has two valence electrons. Okay, and um, what, what atom is this? How would we tell? Well, we could look at the total number of electrons, which is the, we could look at the subscript, or sorry, the superscripts. So we have two plus two is four, plus six is 10, plus two is 12. So there's a total of 12 electrons, which makes our atom, let's look, magnesium. Okay. All right. So valence electrons, the valence electrons are going to be written around as dots around the atom symbol. And I, we're going to, I'm going to go back and demonstrate that in a moment. But um, I want to kind of focus on point four first. So remember that only S and P orbitals can be valence electrons. So there are four possible orbitals for valence electrons. Um, okay, that could be a little confusing. So let's draw um, 
an orbital diagram for, I guess I should pick something first. Let's go back up here. Let's pick, how about, let's pick a, we're going to pick selenium, which has 34 electrons. Ooh, that's a long one. Okay. So we have one S with one orbital and two electrons, two S, two P, P has three orbitals, and remember from Hund's rule, we put one electron in each orbital first, and then go back and fill it up. So after 2p, we have 3s, 3p, oh. 4s, and then hopefully remember after 4s, we get to 3d. Five S. Oh no, Miss Moore, not five S. Let's try that again. Four P. And let's see, we're at two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two, twenty four, twenty six, twenty eight, thirty. We're at thirty. We need to get to thirty four, right? So I need four more. Okay. That is the orbital diagram for selenium. And if we were to write the electron configuration, it would be, let's change colors here, so in case I run into things, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p4. All right, so um, the reason I draw this out, just one second, let's scroll up here for a minute. The reason I draw this out is I wanted to demonstrate that only the s and p sublevels or orbitals can be valence electrons. And we're going we're gonna to show that right now. So... Remember, valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level, meaning the biggest coefficient, right? Which is 4s, and then we go down to 3d, and then back up to 4p. So only ever will the s and p be valence electrons, because when we go to the d, or even the f, we go down in energy levels. Okay, so selenium has um, its valence electrons are 4s2, 4p4, um, and there are a total of six valence electrons. Um, hopefully that makes sense sense why it's only the S and the P that can be valence electrons. All right, um, before I move on, go back and do an example, I wanted to um, sh explain why in the world did I take the time to write the orbital diagram, is I wanted to point out that because, no, scroll up, I'll come back down, because, um, Because only S and P orbitals can hold valence electrons, um, there are a total of four valence orbitals. Mm. 
I put that in quotation marks because I just sort of made that up. Okay, so what do I mean by orbitals? Remember these lines, these little dashed lines? Those are orbitals. Um, in your handout, they're boxes. And if you notice, S, S's, S, S orbitals, S sublevels only have one orbital and P's have four. So it's important to know that um, valence electrons, there are, there are possible of four valence orbitals. And we kind of just merge them together into S and P, okay? All right, so let's go back to our last two steps here and we'll try an example. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna write the valence electrons are gonna be written as dots around the atom symbol. So we'll pick an example, let's pick fluorine. So fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. This fluorine has a total of nine electrons. I guess we should have looked at that. So fluorine is here with a total, that was terrible, how about this? It's written here with a total of nine electrons. So which ones are the valence electrons? They're the electrons in the outermost energy level. which is right there. So he has a total of seven valence electrons. Okay, so now we're gonna write the symbol fluorine. And remember, let me go back down here, um, because only S and P orbitals can hold valence electrons, there are a total of four valence orbitals. Okay, so, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna imagine, I'm gonna make this lines really small. You're gonna imagine that there's an orbital on each side of the, um, each side of the, the symbol, okay? Um, and from Hun's rule, hopefully you remember, we're gonna, we're gonna treat these just like orbitals. So from Hun's rule, we put one electron in each orbital first, right? And then go back and fill in. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there is the um, orbital diagram. No, Miss Moore, try that again. The Lewis dot structure for the fluorine atom. Now, normally, let me move that out of the way a little bit. Normally we don't actually put these little, let me label this here. The, this white stuff are the orbitals. Um, normally we make those orbitals invisible. Okay, so what we would, the way we would really write this normally is fluorine. Oops. Like that. You'll notice that they're paired up and we can sort of imagine those orbitals being there. Okay, so that's basically how you um, write the Lewis dot structure for a single atom. Okay, um, I wanna take a few minutes to show you an easier way to figure out the number of valence electrons other than writing the electron configuration over and over again. It's something we've already gone over with periodic trends um, and the periodic table organization, but you might have forgotten it. So let's review that really quickly. Um, hopefully you remember that everything in group 1A, so, group 1a, they all end in, in S1, okay? All the valence electrons. Group 2a all end in S2. Group 3a all end in S2, P1, 3B all end in S2, P2, 
Oh, wait a minute. Somebody's shouting at me, Miss Moore, you know what you're doing? That's not 3A, or 3B. Sorry, oops. That is 4A. Sorry. Five, group 5A in in S2P3. 6A in in S2P4. Um, 7A and in S2P5 and 8A all end in S2P6, which, by the way, is the maximum number of valence electrons. So hopefully that will make figuring out the valence electrons a little bit easier. All right, I want to try now, as we're wrapping this up, let's try some examples. So we'll start with carbon. So the first thing we do is we write the symbol, carbon, and then we figure out the number of valence electrons. So carbon ends in is in group 4A, right? Carbon's in group 4A, so he ends in S2P2, which means he has four valence electrons. So if he has four valence electrons, we're gonna put one electron in each of the invisible orbitals. One, two, three, four. There you go. All right, let's try neon. So neon is in group 8A. So neon ends in um, S2P6, which means he has eight valence electrons. So this time, we're still gonna put, just like following Hund's rule, when, we're, when we did um, electron configuration, we put one electron in each of the invisible orbitals, and then we can go back and pair it up. Okay, very careful. You're not gonna just do something like that. That's not pairing the electrons up, okay? So you need to draw them nice and neat and organized. So we have NE, with one in each of the invisible orbitals, one on the top, bottom, side, side, and then we can go back and pair them up. Okay, and this is kind of cool. We can see that all of the orbitals are full. All right, let's try the last one. We'll try nitrogen. So nitrogen is there. So um, by the way, you don't need to like memorize up here. You can just count across. You can see nitrogen is there. So he ends in S1, S2, P1, P2, P3, which is five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, and then we pair the last one up. And it doesn't really ma matter if you pair top, bottom, side, side. No, I'll just do it here just to show you, okay? So there you go. Um, I hope you kind of understand this and that's it for today. Have a good one.